had a lot of people ask me about the thermocline and its effects on fishing so I decided to do a two-part series dealing with the good side and the bad side of fishing the thermocline the first video that I put out last week dealt with the bad side of fishing the thermocline and my brother and I took a trip down the river and it was very unsuccessful and we think a lot of it had to do with the thermocline Today we're driving down the road to launch our boat into Palm de Terre Lake and we're going to go up in the lake and if we're successful we're going to show you how we go about fishing the thermocline and we call that the good side of the thermocline. The thermocline actually helps us catch fish sometimes. Sometimes it does not help us catch fish, it hurts us. In fact uh, the day after the part one video we had a large fish kill on Palm de Terre Lake. The authorities here attributed that fish kill to low dissolved oxygen in the water due to the effects of the thermocline. I don't claim to be an expert on the thermocline. In fact, I'm far from it. But if you want to know more about it, I'll refer you to an article by Lee McClellan he did this article for the World Fishing Network and the title of it was Find the Thermocline for Better Summer Fishing Success. It's the best article that I've ever read on the subject. But our purpose is not to teach you what the thermocline is and how it works, but the effect that it has on fishing. And we're going to see if today we can make the thermocline have a good effect on this fishing trip. Well, the weather looks good. Looks like we have a chance of having a good day. We've got a nice chop on the water. And we left the trail points on our fish locator from the last trip that we took about a week ago. So we're going to go there and hope that the fish are still where they were then. Well, there's even more wind out on the flats where we're going to fish, and that's okay. We like wind, but uh, I usually troll five rods when I'm Malta rigging, but if the wind gets much worse, we may have to go to four. Well, we've got the rods out. We're ready to set them up, and I'll give you a quick tour of what we're doing. You can see that the fish locator has been extended so I can see it anywhere in the boat. And that's essential because I'll be controlling the remotely controlled electronic trolling motor. I'll be handling that and I need to be able to see it from anywhere in the boat as we try to keep this boat on top of fish. Well the rods are all in the water now and uh, we're about ready to rumble. Dwayne's going to watch those rods while I get all set up here to get the electronics going. If you're going to fish the thermocline, you have to know where the thermocline is, and that's where our electronics comes in. So the first thing we're going to do is try to find out where the thermocline is, and then we're going to try to find out where the fish are, and then we're going to try to run our lures at the proper speed and the proper depth to catch those fish that we find on the electronics. As we zoom in and look at the map on our fish locator, we'll notice several things. First off, you'll notice that we left the trail marks from the last trip there so that we could find where we caught them the last time. You'll also notice that the water is 30 foot deep. The black arrow shows you where our current boat position is and the 1.6 at the top shows you the speed we plan to troll. As we focus on the right side of the screen, you'll see the down image screen, and we have increased the sensitivity to the point that you can visually see where the thermocline is. It's setting at approximately 22 feet. Fish tend to gather around the thermocline 
in water that is deeper than the thumb recline. And that's what we're going to focus on. The thermocline band is usually three or four feet wide and fish tend to stay in it or four or five feet above it. We have now located fish we want to try to catch and notice that they are in a five or six foot range just above the thermocline that you can see. This guy don't look very big. Notice here that when you fish water that is shallower than the thermocline depth, the fish will still tend to gather within five or six feet of that depth. I do a lot, if not most, of my trolling with my gas motor, but notice when you're multi-rigging as we are today, the advantages of the remote-controlled electric motor. I can walk around the boat, catch a few fish, take care of chores in the boat. I'm not bound by sitting in the captain's seat while I'm fishing.
Rolling motor here. It was I had my north thing off. Looks like we're going too fast too. Oh, I'm in this line. It's a white bass.
can't find the fish. But, but let's pay attention where we're at when we get in them again. Notice in this video clip that I have erased all of the previous trails. It was getting so congested that I was having a difficult time staying on the fish. So we deleted all of them and started over. Still a white bass, I think. Well, drum. Dang drum. Both of mine started to grab both of mine. This one here hit. I got one on this Another double. Large man. <laughs> Large mouth bass. Someplace else in this lake too that this fish. Besides right here if we know where it's at. That's bad.
we've been here now what what uh, hour and a half or so and uh, yeah we've been here actually about two hours and that thermocline has dropped about uh, three feet That's a good crappie. He might have been there a while ago when you said that. That's a big old crappie. Well, with that last fish, we've got to get out of here. We've got some other commitments. I hope you've enjoyed this. We've been here about two and a half uh, hours or so, and uh, I hope we've shown you how the thermocline can help us catch more fish by reducing the volume of water the fish live in and causing them to localize into more condensed groups in a more predictable pattern. If uh, you have other questions you want to ask or comments you want to make, always feel free to do so. And thank you for watching.